So think about this. You have to go to Mars, but you don't really know what to expect when you get there. So what are you gonna what are you gonna do? How are you gonna get that information about how people live, not only with the things that you need to stay alive, like food, water, oxygen, air, all those things, but what about your living circumstance? How does that work? NASA figured it, or they are figuring it out by, by doing a test on Earth of a simulated Mars habitat. So eventually, so this is a, this is a SpaceX thing too, because SpaceX does want to send people to Mars and they're going to send people to the moon. But they do want to make habitable area on Mars for people in the future to live in and work in. And Elon has said numerous times, hey, we're going to send like hundreds of rockets at a time to Mars so we can make a sustainable place for humans to live there. So the things that we do here on Earth are very important for the future of human spaceflight. We're going to send rovers there first. We've already sent a bunch of rovers. Going to send satellites there. We're going to send things to test out the soil, how to make in situ places to live. But also, we're going to send places for people to live on starships and other NASA missions. And I'm pretty sure NASA is going to pick Starship or they'll have a Blue Origin set, sort of back up eventually. But I believe they're going to pick Starship for these Mars missions in the future. Now, they have to make something called an analog, right? So basically, they build something on Earth where people can live and play and work for X amount of time, depending on the situation. They're going to stay for a year. They might stay for six months. They might stay for three months, depending on what scientific experiments they need to get done and what they have to figure out for this specific experiment. So I want to show you this really cool habitat that NASA has people in right now. This is an interesting concept because if you think about it, you're going to be with a few people in this analog, in this habitat on Earth. And if you ever say, I can't take this anymore, you can just leave, right? You can just get out of there and NASA will be like, okay, we understand something's wrong and you need to go. But when you're on Mars, that's a whole different thing. You can't leave. You can't just jump in a car and drive away. You can't just get in a rocket and fly back to Earth. You have to stay there until your mission's done because there's going to be specific parameters that you have to follow in order to take a trip back to Earth. And if you can't handle it, then that's what these analogs on Earth are all about. You have to figure out what's a breaking point for people. Let me show you this. They just put some people in this thing. It's 3D printed, 1,700 square foot habitat. I'm going to show you this right now. It's the NASA SLS Twitter account. Chapya. I don't know. I don't know how they pronounce it. Chapya. Let's just say it like that. Crew Health and Performance Exploration Analog is NASA's first one-year ground-based mission that will simulate living on Mars. The crew will live and work in a 3D-printed 1,700-square-foot habitat. And this is like a really quick run-through of the habitat. And, okay, so it, it's shaky, so I'm going to pause some of these places. So there's a little bathroom. There's a toilet, which I don't know how that's going to work on Mars. They don't really know it, how that's going to work on Mars either. I'm sure it's going to be similar to here, but there's, it looks like there is a sink right in front of this person and also some paper towels and hand sanitizer on the right. And we have some soap, which is pretty normal. It looks, it reminds me of like a, an RV. Like if you go to a bathroom in an RV, like this is, it's pretty similar. There's a toilet and a little sink. This sink is bigger than a toilet area, which is surprising. And it looks like there's a shower on the right side. I'm not sure if they're going to, yep. They did a real quick pan of the shower. Right there is the shower. I don't know why I'm so huge on this. Just, you're going to have to squint and look real close on that, on the side there. And then they go from the bathroom and you turn right around. I wouldn't want to live in this bedroom. Have you ever been on a bus? Any, or near, or in an airplane or like, any place that you've lived where if you are the person that's next to the toilet, you get all the, you get all the extras, right? So like somebody comes out of the bathroom, the door opens and everything gets flushed out of there. And there might be a fan to circulate it, but sometimes there's residuals. Let's just say that. And if there's residuals, you're the person across the hall. 
oh, this is not going to be whoever's staying in this room. Not good. Not good. Anyway, it looks like a normal, like tiny dorm room, like a small bed. Looks like it has an end table, a little chair to sit at, a little dresser. It looks like a dresser that you would get like those, those square cube things that you can get at like Target or Walmart or whatever for like college kids and the kind of plastic or whatever. It looks like that. And there's, I think there's a little dresser in the back, but you go down here and it looks like there's a, it looks like storage of some sort, maybe experiments here. Maybe some plants go there. I'm not sure. Fire extinguisher, some disinfectant over there. Then you go into, it looks like another working kitchen area. Yeah, it looks like a kitchen sink. And then see how it all blends together. There's a dining room there, a kitchen, toaster oven, like a little coffee maker, a sink. They have a lot of counter space, by the way. As a grown up, like counter space is important. So they have a ton of counter space. And then, let me just zoom back a little bit. They have a little entertainment area. Looks cool. They have some comfy chairs. Looks like they have a TV. Two TVs. There's a TV there, too. And then they go into more of, looks like, a work area. So, looks like a workout area as well. Looks like they have a bike. And they also have, is that a tread? I don't think that's a treadmill. I think there's two bikes and some sort of weight bench there. Not a hundred percent sure. And then here's the computer room, probably, probably server room, like someplace where they can check out what's going on in the whole area, check out all the systems and things like that. Server room, let's call it that. And they have, looks like a, a lab of some sort. So this looks like a system where they would put their hands in to the system where they probably got some rocks from the outside of the Mars surface. They're working with that and it looks pretty interesting, right? So you can go through and it's pretty similar to everything. There's a airlock that goes into where they would go outside into onto Mars. Right. And then they have a fake Mars background here and stuff, but it's remember, this is just a place to check stuff out. This isn't them actually doing experiments on Mars. This is what they're doing on earth. So they can take the knowledge that they get from how the people respond to the environment of being in a small environment like this for a long time. And also what's going to happen to like, how much food do they need? How much water do they need? They check all that stuff too. So they have that. And then we have NASA Mars. That's their Twitter account. I got the wrong thing, but it looks like the bedrooms are the same thing as before. Small bedroom, 1700 square foot, 3d printed habitat. And here's what we were looking at before, but it's the slower version of it. I can scan through and we can. You can see a little bit more of it. You can see that it's a pretty big area over here too. In a suit up area. It's cool looking gloves. Intra fit gloves. But you could probably get these gloves somewhere. I bet you we could Google that. We could Amazon these things, get them sent to the house. Intra fit, I-N-T-R-A dash fit. And it looks like a okay place to live for a little bit. But what would you do? Would you stay there for a while? Would you do an experiment like this? Where you stay there for a year, where you get trapped in here for a year and NASA, they could allow you out if you have a medical emergency, but any other than that, you're a guinea pig. And this is going to show people what it's like to live on Mars until they get out of this thing. Pretty interesting. And we need things like that, not just the engineering, not just the science, but we need the human part of this in order for us to get to Mars. Because without any of this, you would just send randos to Mars, like Mars One was going to, and then all those people wouldn't know what's going on. Yeah, Mars One is a whole other thing, but we'll talk about that in another episode. Neil and I have a plan for that, but man, that was, let's just call it a shit show, okay? Can we just call Mars One a shit show? That's exactly what it was. I got to interview Boz Landsdorp back in the day, and it was, all, he was like a nice guy, but the whole concept was weird. Anyway. This is not weird. This is NASA. This is science. This is engineering. They're doing it right. They're not just going to send people there without any information before, before they actually get there. It, so they're going to have habitats. They're going to have places to grow things. They're going to have everything. That's a cool looking mirror too. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty neat. I think it's a cool experiment. It's all 3D printed. As you can see, they're using something that looks like Mars regolith that'll be 3D printed on the surface of Mars to build this sort of habitat. And if this is a working prototype and they can get this to 
be good enough on Earth, then they could do the same thing on Mars using some using the same techniques or similar techniques to build a little base on Mars, like mud huts back in the day when like ancient civilizations, people would just pile mud up, mud and dirt and sticks and rocks and stuff. That's what this 3D environment is, but we use machines instead. So we've done it before and we can do it again. Did it here. We can probably do it on Mars. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, take a second, hit the subscribe button. Maybe you can go to Mars someday. I think that'd be pretty sick too. I'm not going to Mars. That's crazy. I couldn't do it. I would go crazy. I should say I would go, I would go nuts. But anyway, if you could go to Mars, would you? I don't know. Leave it in the comments. Thanks everybody. Take care of yourselves. Also subscribe. It helps. Bye.